<clears throat> All right, so up here at the top right, that's the uh, competitive tier list. If you guys are playing any tournaments or just want to do flex queue or something, right? Uh, down here is going to be a solo queue one, right? So don't confuse those because it's very different, right? You're not going to see uh, some of these champions do as well in solo queue. In the same way around, you know, like Katarina, for instance, isn't very, it's hard to pull off in a team setting. All right, well, Atrox got two attack damage, and uh, yeah, he's just getting a little bit of damage everywhere. But the thing is, Atrox is already he's okay into some matchups. Like uh, some people will pick him against. Uh, Melee versus melee, like carries, you know, he could lane against Fiora or um, Riven, Darius, or something like that, right? And the thing is, he will win the lane by default, but if he gets ganked at all, if he gets behind, he's kind of trash. But if he gets ahead, he's really hard to deal with, right? Because if he can just keep jumping on you and all inning you, it's, it's very hard to deal with. Uh, so, it's very... He's, he's actually, like, when you pick Atrox you put a lot of faith in your jungler and and a lot of faith in the enemy jungler to not, you know, ruin your lane because it's very difficult to, you know, consistently come out with a lead on Atrox. So he's not the best champion to play for that reason, at least in the higher ranks. Uh, so he doesn't even show up here. He's actually a... Where is he at? Where is my boy Atrox? Right here. He's at number 43 for top lane in solo queue. And I did move him up quite a bit. I mean, those buffs did matter, but, you know, like, look, there's so many better champions to pick. Like, so many better champions to pick that it's like it almost doesn't matter that he's buffed. You know what I'm saying? All right, Jace. This guy was pretty much, like, the best, the best champion to play if you were, like, a one-trick, right, in top lane. Because... It's he he just wins lane by default in most matchups. He doesn't really have many bad matchups. Um and he has really good carry potential. So he's using losing uh ten damage on his Q. And so whenever he shoots that through his, his gate, that's gonna be fifteen damage he loses. Uh and he's losing five seconds off of his little hammer smack to knock people back. Uh, the the hammer smack is actually going to be uh, the biggest thing because now you have a much larger window that you can trade into Jace. For instance, if you're playing something like um, Irelia, right? Uh, you think you can think of Jace's E as a uh, his disengage, right? And if you have five more seconds to trade onto him, uh, that makes it a lot harder for him to play into like specific like Irelia matchup. Um, other matchups that want to like jump but only have like one way to get in. Uh, so, for instance, like Renekton here and Kled, they'll have bigger windows. Um, I'll just go down the list and say champions that, that can now do better into, into Jace. Uh, mostly Irelia, Jax, Riven. And I, those are pretty much the only ones that matter because those are pretty popular, right? So those matchups uh, just got a lot harder for him, right? There it is. Okay. Uh, and that's going to matter, right? So if you don't, if you're not good at Jace's, you just kind of, he's a lot worse now, but I still have him at number two, right? Um, because he's really damn good. Or he's number five. Number five in solo queue, but in competitive, he's number two, right? Because uh, players can play around to this, right? Because in the draft, it's very easy to pick Jace. You, you can pick Jace as just a top laner. He can lane against everybody, pretty much. But also, um, you could even flex him into mid lane if you want. That just makes him stupidly strong as a blind pick, right? Because if, he, if they do, like, pick... If they do pick Irelia into you, or something like that, right? You can just sit in mid lane and pick something that counters Irelia. So you just cover up that base. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, oh yeah, Camille's another matchup that Jace has a hard time into, and this actually makes it to where I think Camille wins that matchup like every time. So yeah, if you're not good at Jace, uh, he's still good, but I would say try and probably play Camille instead. Camille is really, really, really good right now. Kane, uh, he was already kind of okay. He was like number uh, 13 or 14 in the jungle last last uh, patch, 7.24. And he gets um, about a long sword uh, in damage and some healing. Someone on the Kane mains, I looked, I looked at this because I was like, wait, how much is he actually getting? Because they say 34% they say to uh 43 right but you got to consider that you're not getting your transformation until like level eight or nine or something so he really only he gets like four percent more spell vamp that's cool um i mean it might matter sometime but like it's mostly the damage that he's getting and he's he's pretty good actually it moves him up a bit right he's uh he's at number eight on my list that might be a little generous honestly uh after seeing him for a bit But he's definitely uh, really good. Definitely really good. The exact placement of him for solo queue is kind of hard to judge, right? Kane is a weird champion in that he has two forms, and you always have to account that some people are playing one form or the other over the other, and it's skewing like it's hard to say they're playing Kane right or wrong, um, or hard to know just by looking at like numbers on like an average. Pulled from like the right APA and all that, you know what I mean? So hard to judge Kane because of his dual forming and all that. But he's good. He's at number eight right now. Kled, uh, getting some damage, getting some damage growth. That's the same as Kane. He's getting about a, a long sword um, in damage, which is nice. And then Jousting is getting. 10 more damage and since he can use jousting twice that's actually 20 more damage and 20 more damage in the all in is quite quite noticeable so Kled got buffed a bit I have him at number 26 in top lane that's kind of like another Atrox complex where it's like if he gets really ahead it's so hard to deal with him but if he's behind it's pretty manageable like ever since Orn came out Kled hasn't been pickable since Right, because Orn, just as a champion, completely denies Clyde from doing anything in the laning phase. Because if Clyde goes in, Orn press W, and then hits him, and then knocks him off his horse, and now Clyde's nothing. But uh, even, even outside of that matchup, he's very hard to pull off uh, consistently. Because just like Atrox, if you get ganked by enemy jungler, it's hard for you to recover. Hmm. And just you naturally have to be playing aggressive, right, to make Clud work. Renekton uh, gets some damage, gets the attack damage growth. Uh, that helps, honestly, but he's, like, again, he doesn't even show up here. He's way down here, right? Renekton, where are you at, buddy? Renekton. Renekton. Here he is, at number 52. Is really not that good right now. He'd only be seen as a counter pick. In competitive, the same thing. He's only seen as a counter pick. And nobody's picked him since the rework in competitive. Uh, and pick zero times. So Keep in mind, like, Kled and Renekton are Tiamat users. And Tiamat did also get buffs. So they kind of got, like, a double whammy buff. But I did account for that when I, when I made the changes. So it's... It's not enough, right? You, you'll see the placement, like only Kled. Kled's the most playable out of these three Atrox, Kled, and Renekton. Tima loses some stats. I mean, okay. He's losing the attack damage, right? That 4 AD actually is going to matter more because you have to think that how many times is Timo going to be autoing you? Like, say, like just at level one, maybe he'll auto you five times. Right? Or you're just giving up the CS. I mean, that's already 20 damage you saved. You know? That's like a, a door and shield health refill worth of health you just survived. And just throughout before first back, how many autos are actually going to get hit by? 15, 20, 30? 
you know, just multiply that by four. That's how much damage you're going to have more or how much health, you know? So it really adds up the, the attack damage nerfs. Also, you have to think like this is going to make Teemo's lose last hits in some instances. I mean, he shouldn't, but he will inevitably. Four damage will matter. The health growth, it's not affecting his early levels. And that's when Teemo really does his, uh, his thing is in the early levels where he tries to starve the enemy leader. He's still good. He's at number 13. He used to be at like number number like 8 for solo queue or something. Uh, these nerfs are, are something, right? The uh, 4 damage nerf is the uh, one that you'll really feel. Yasuo, um, he's not really playable, actually. Um, even with the buffs. Right, he gets magic resist. That's not really his problem. First thing I thought when I saw these changes was um, maybe it brings Tank Yasuo back. But his uh his R doesn't give armor pin without critting. And that's that was the change that killed Tank Yasuo back in the day, so I don't think so, actually. But maybe a more bruiser Yasuo will work, right? Because Q has 20 higher base damage. That's quite a lot. Think about how many times Yasuo's gonna hit Q on you. If he hits it three times, that's 60 more damage, right? Um so he could uh, opt to go a more bruiser build like it used to be that Yasuo was would rush frozen mallet and then they would get ninja tabe and then they'd do a uh, phantom dancer and infinity edge so you might see something like that come back into being decently viable maybe uh even if Yasuo starts running um grasp of the undying or something other than that i'm not sure But yeah, when tank Yasuo was a thing, they would go like Sunfire Cape and they would dash through the minions and then they'd hit you with grasp and it would be really annoying. So might be something to try out. But really otherwise, if you unless you just really like Yasuo, he's not worth playing. Not for climbing, right? Tiamat, plus five damage, so that's uh, 175 gold. You know, it gained its stats. That's gonna matter. This mostly like the champions that are good right now that use Tiamat. Are um, if we look, uh, Camille, Fiora, uh, I know, I know, um, Irelian Jax, Riven sometimes, uh, and Shin, and Jarvan, I guess. Um, they all do really well. And Camille, right now, Camille is the best champion to pick. Like, she's the carry champion for top lane. You know, if you don't want to play Orn and Maokai and just, you know, fall asleep on your keyboard while your champion plays the game for you <laughs> because all tanks have to do in top lane is sit there and soak up farm and experience. Um, Camille's the one to go for. Uh, and Tiamat buffs are really just... Like, she didn't need any help, and she got some help. So in other words, she's really, really oppressive right now. And Fiora does get, get help off of this as well. She will. She's already good. And the uh, the team office will be really nice for her. the giant slayer thing. I don't think this matters really. If an AD carry needs to shred a tank, he'll get this. But most of the time, people go like the the mortal reminder one. I mean, they do go this thing, right? If they're an AD carry, but I mean, on champions who aren't AD carries and they're getting last whisper, let's let's say like um like a, a Zed or something. He has a black cleaver. He's going to get mortal reminder because he's building health. It's I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. I don't think the change really really does anything at all. The nerf lethality, that won't matter. There are no champions that build lethality now that will stop building lethality. This won't change anything effectively. The champions that got hurt like you gotta look at like the the eighty carries right now, <laughs> Ezreal, Misfortune, Jin, um, Varus, and all that. Those are all lethality builders. And like, what happens if all of the lethality build the entire top five is lethality builders? What happens when they nerf lethality? It's like a blanket nerf over everything, which does nothing, right? It just brings them closer in line with the uh, the other champions, like maybe Vayne and stuff, but really doesn't do much and then the junglers that build lethality like Kha'Zix and Rengar like they're still doing the same thing 
really like the two lethality doesn't prevent the Kha'Zix from killing you um, when just Q auto electrocute with his dust blade is gonna you know 100 to 0 a squishy who hasn't built any who hasn't built ninja tobbies pretty much so into those champions like Kha'Zix it's still gonna be ninja tobbies or die if you're the little scared ADC running around right so that nerf doesn't do anything I don't know they say it's about Pantheon, but I haven't seen a Pantheon in one of my games in a while. Okay. Azir. Um, he, en he ends up losing like 20 damage or something. Uh, yeah, he ends up losing like 20 damage in the mid game, right? And I did the math, it's about 16% of his damage. I think that's pretty big. One of the things they did to make, when they reworked Azir, one of the things they did that made him really take off was uh, they did the exact opposite of this. They gave him plus 20 damage. So here they're just reverting that change. Uh, and he wasn't really good before that change. People are still going to play him. Of course, I have him at number 5. He's still very good. Like Azir's, Azir is pretty, like, he kind of breaks the rules in a way in that he's a control mage, but he also has, like, s insane mobility. <laughs> He is the control mage with the longest range jump. Ridiculous. You know, like, Oriana doesn't get to jump and zip over walls whenever he gets ganked, right? Victor doesn't get to do that. You know, just off of that, it makes him the safest control mage. Um, which is really powerful. As well as he has the ability to, like, self-peel himself with his wall. So he kind of secures himself uh, scaling into the mid and late game, which... Other control majors, it's not that easy to do, you know? Uh, so that's something that's going to keep Azir relevant, no matter what happens, really. Um, unless his numbers are, like, destroyed completely. Uh, as long as he is still a relevant champion in the mid to late game, uh, he'll still be picked, right? And he still is going to be relevant. That's why I only moved him down a few pegs. Uh, Mostly, like, he, he and Zareth were the ones they were that were picked constantly in competitive back at Kespa Cup, but that's when Zoe wasn't enabled, right? Uh, now, at, at the All-Stars, we saw that Zoe is permaband as well. So now there are three midliners, Zoe, Zareth, and Azir. And I just moved Azir up. I mean, I moved Azir below Zareth, but they're still the top three, right? Cassiopeia, she, uh, it's going to cost less mana to use her Q. And um, gets 0.1 ability power. So you've got to think that one of the only reasons you'd pick Cassiopeia right now over something like Rise. Actually, you wouldn't pick Cassiopeia over Rise. <laughs> you'd never pick Cassiopeia over Rise. So one of the reasons you're not picking Cassiopeia is because you have Azir and Rise, which do the same thing but better. Um, but what do these things do? Well, if we go back to the the uh spreadsheet right cassiopeia ends up being right here at number 40 um and the main issue is what she does other people just do better and you're not really looking for your at your mid laner for a dps right now there are only a few champions that really do that and that's azir and that's because he's just so absurd and like no one else uh talia almost sort of she has kind of a dps thing and corky right so She's not in the meta. The buffs don't propel her into the meta. The 0.1 ability power, that's going to be, you know, at 200, 200 AP, that's going to be 20 damage. So once she gets her Morellinomicon, um, plus, you know, a... What's she building towards? I don't know, Morellinomicon plus like an Amp Tome, right? Something like that. She's going to have 200 ability power, she's going to do 20 more damage. With each E... I mean, it could be something, but one of the only ways that Cassiopeia can find a good spot in the meta is through the Abyssal Mask rush, right? And if you're going Abyssal Mask, the AP ratio really doesn't matter. At least for the early portion of the game, right? Because that, that item's not giving you any AP. You only look for the base damage. So it's, then it's really just the mana cost, and the mana cost isn't really what's keeping... She's just bad, you know? She's just bad. Champions who do the same thing that are just better. 
Well, Zometa doesn't fit her right now. Corky is just a solid midliner, right? I guess they nerfed him for... I don't know. He wasn't that popular. He wasn't picked in tournaments very much. He wasn't picked in solo queue very much. He wasn't insanely oppressive. He's mostly picked when your entire team is inting by going full AD comp. And you're an AD carry main who got auto filled mid. That's when you pick Corky. <laughs> I mean, I feel like most of the Corky players are auto filled AD carry players. Um, I mean, of course, there are some people who just play mid Corky, but most mid mains who just are meta slaves, right? They don't. They don't think. Oh yeah, Corky. Corky's part of my repertoire. Uh. I really hope he doesn't get nerfed. I mean, nobody thinks that way, right? This champion's nerfs are kind of out of the blue. <laughs> but really, where it puts him, he was in a pretty decent spot, right? Uh, and now he's at number 16, you know? Um, he's still respectable. All these champions in the green are champions that you, ex you... Nobody's surprised when they're picked, you know? You see Malzahar, you see Cassidy and LeBlanc, Talia, you're like, oh yeah, that's a meta mid laner, right? That's basically where that is. And then the yellow is like, oh, that's a really strong meta champion. And then orange is like, well, this is going to be a hard game because they picked all orange champions, right? <laughs> Like, if you're playing against the the Orans and Zhao, Zoe, Ezreal, Janna, you're just like, who the fuck didn't ban XYZ, you know? That's the orange champions. Permaban status. Yellow normally flies a little under the ban radar. Um, all right. Well, the, I mean, the nerfs, they do something, right? The three damage, just like the Teemo nerfs. you got to think how many times Quirk is going to be hitting you. You're going to be saving so much health. You know, he hits you 10 times in lane phase, it's 30 less damage. And the attack damage growth, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking. That's, they're taking away a longsword from him. That's going to make his scaling a lot worse. Uh, Phosphorus Bomb just lost 20 damage at max rank. I mean... That, uh, he'll still be the same champion, really. He, the, I, don't, I think you can just play him the same way and pick him in the same situations. And he'll feel about the same. It's just he's going to be slightly weaker. Right? He went from being somewhere like around 13 to 16. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I'm confused. Katarina. Okay. So she's like stomps. Pub, uh, she pub stomps solo queue. And that's why she's getting nerfed. She's not really picked at all in competitive. Um... So she does have a spot, right? In certain compositions, if the enemy reveals like a very low CC, uh, susceptible to you know high mobility, Katarina damage and resets and all that, then you can build a comp around her there. But in solo queue, uh, she's she's really good actually. If you know how to play her, the nerfs don't really do too much. Fifteen damage that's mostly affecting your your early kill pressure. Right with the electric Q, where you like hit hit level two first, but uh, there are not many opportunities for Katarina to hit level two first and all in when someone knows what they're doing because they're not going to let Katarina just walk up and auto the wave. You know, think about laning against an Azir as Katarina. The Azir is not just going to let you auto the wave for free, ideally, right? If he's not like brain dead or something, um, and into like every matchup, right? It's like that. Where she's going to take too much poke trying to rush that level 2, that she won't be able to abuse that. But really, this is what it, it's going to hurt. The 15 damage is when, what you're going to feel. It's like it's almost like taking, uh, like toning down her electrocute in a way. <laughs> because she has a lot of kill pressure with electrocute right now. But the thing is, the 15 damage isn't going to be the difference between when her jungler ganks and she follows up, they're still going to die, right? Uh, so uh, this really just hurts her solo kill pressure, and I don't think Katarina is really going for solo kills so much. Not against competent players, because uh, people have to make mistakes to get solo killed by Katarina. She doesn't just find kills out of nowhere, at, at least before she gets ultimate, right? Q, her paddle star got harder to use. Uh, if someone's familiar with Zoe, this isn't really going to be an issue. 
Ezreal loses some attack speed. He doesn't really care about attack speed. He gets a ton of it from Trinity Force and his passive, and he already has like a, a 2k gold lead on you because he hit you with like 6 Qs in lady phase <laughs> with Kleptomancy. I mean... Kleptomancy is is the reason this guy's on the top and little attack speed nerf. It's not even that little, but the attack speed nerf's not going to, you know, knock him off of his throne. Right. Shield of Daybreak loses 20 damage. Uh it's quite large. She actually I pulled her out of the S tier for solo Q. And so it's just Jana right there. It's because that the damage she got hit with for 20 damage last patch, 20 damage this patch. You gotta think her level three is doing 40 less damage. That's a ton. Do you remember? Sivir went from being completely irrelevant to that shit crazy, right? Like insane OP picker ban, 58% win rate because they added 60 damage to her Q. 60, right? And I know this isn't 60, right? But they cut 40 from Leona. You have to think what that's going to do to her, right? That amount of kill pressure taken away early on is huge. Um, especially since she can start Q in a lot of situations, and she can get it off twice in a, in a like a skirmish because it's six second cooldown. So, that does hurt, but she'll still be very respectable. Miss Fortune loses uh, some, or she she has an increased cooldown on her E. Uh, that's <laughs> it makes her early lane weaker, right? Her early lane's no big deal. The thing Misfortune does really well is she pokes you down, and if you just let her poke you down, which sometimes it's hard to deal with if the support if the support that MF is leaning with is also, you know, going aggressive, then it's really hard to deal with. But what MF really sucks at is extended fights. You know, if you have a if you're playing Tristana and you jump on top of MF and you put your bomb on her, and you just keep wailing on her, and then you jump on her again to extend the trade. Like, she can't do anything. MF, her ideal trade is, you know, Q, and then auto attack, and then back up, right? She'll Q through a minion, auto attack you, and proc her passive, and then back up. So, it hurts her, her early lane when in those all-in situations where if she, she needs the, the E four seconds faster... But honestly, it won't, it won't really affect her placement very much. Her and Ezreal were, like, way, way above the rest of the competition. So it really just moves them closer in line with uh, the other ones. Lethality nerfs. Again, MF isn't going to stop building lethality just because this stuff happens. She's going to be the same champion. Ramus loses attack speed. That'll hurt his clear. He's probably going to be a lot worse. Uh, I moved him down to here, number 14. He used to be higher, but he, he's actually kind of respectable, but the thing is he's um, somewhat of a liability in certain comps. Like if you have an Ornn or, or a Maokai top lane, you don't really want a Ramus in the jungle. And a lot of times you don't really want a Ramus in the jungle anyways. I mean, he becomes pretty good, right? When you have like a Jace top, uh, a mid laner, like a Zerath or something, like just some generic, like good mid laner, an AD carry, and then you have a, a tanky support, like say you have a Braum or a Tom Kent or a Thresh or something, then having like a secondary tank, uh, like a Ramus, could be a really good pick. But the thing is, that's not what the meta is right now. The meta is all about these like duelist things, and Ramus is not very good in a 1v1. Sorcery Path gives less ability power. It won't really matter. This is like a blanket nerf to every champion in the game, right? So just imagine everyone gets a little less kill pressure uh, for free, right? And then you got to think, if everybody's getting affected by that, then it's kind of like a just everyone's relatively the same because pretty much everyone's running this tree. It only will affect people who are running something else, you know, Inspiration or something. Uh, might have more of an advantage now if they're running Spellbook or something like Vladimir or Kennen, right? Likes to run Spellbook. Or even the Echoes that ran, uh, 
what is it? Glacial augment. Mana flow band. This is probably the biggest change in the patch. Uh, for the uh, how people play the game. Because uh, 15 seconds longer on mana flow bands means a lot of the champions who are relying on mana can't uh, sustain through as long. So if you waste your abilities, it's going you're going to feel a lot more because you're going to get a lot less mana. Whenever mana flow band procs, you refund an ability, which let's say it's like 80 mana, and you also get a percentage of your mana back, which ends up being something like 30 or something. So... I think all of that's on a 15 second longer cooldown. Uh, which helps the champions who don't use mana quite a bit, right? So you gotta think, Katarina's still gonna be fine with this. If, if the enemy uh, mid laner doesn't have enough mana to kill her anymore, because let's say the Malzahar used his uh, abilities on minions too much, or uh, you know, s uh, some similar situation, right? Or Vladimir, you know, it's a lot easier to burn the enemy out of mana. Same with Zed. Those champions aren't affected, or they are affected by this in a positive way because the ch people they're laning against are going to be a lot weaker. They're going to have less abilities to throw at them because those champions generally had kind of a um, a defensive laning phase uh, in in terms of like Vladimir and Katarina. They play on the defensive and then they they go aggressive when they um when the enemy steps up too far, right? And kind of like Zed too. Zed uh, generally has a pretty kind of aggressive laning phase, but he, he more like pretends to be aggressive in order to dissuade the enemy from uh, going aggressive on him, because actually at level 1, Zed's quite vulnerable. Uh, and stuff like that, right? So... And that's it. Oh wait, that's not it. Scorch. It's going to lose 10 damage, so again, this goes along with the early kill pressure. It's just going to be less. Right, everybody's gonna have a little less kill pressure. Same with the AP changes. So champions who really just want to like, you know, make it through lane. Like let's say with Vladimir, if he just makes it through lane and farms, he's happy. Same with like Katarina, if she just makes it through lanes and farm, he's happy. Uh, and this is more of a nerf to you know those high kill pressure matchups, high kill pressure lanes. Like um, uh, let's say. You know, assassins, you know, a fizz or something. Or even the tanks, because a lot of the tanks like to run Scorch just because, uh, I mean, 20 damage every wave is pretty nice. And that's it. That's it, guys. <laughs>